Now that we've seen how to create a simple product, let's take a look at product attributes. Product attributes are additional pieces of structured information that you want to provide the user regarding any given product. So we'll take a look at this regarding our Sunrise mug. So go back to your catalog, which again is at Products and Catalog. And where we have Sunrise mug, we're going to click Edit. And up here, you'll see we have the option to add an attribute. We're going to click that button. And you'll see we have a couple attributes we can add just right out of the box, color and manufacturer. For our Sunrise mug, we're going to add a size attribute. We're going to do this by clicking Create New Attribute. And other examples of attributes that you might have are for maybe a clothing store, you would definitely have clothing size, maybe color, things like that. It's again, pieces of information that are going to be very important to the customer that you can provide in some sort of well-structured fashion, as opposed to the more generic, maybe the more subjective description that we already placed for the product. So this attribute, once again, is going to be size. We're telling the customer with this new attribute that we're creating what the size of the mug is. We have a couple different input types we can choose from here. We have text field and text area. We can make this have to be a date. We can make this be a simple yes or no. Maybe we would put whether the mug comes with a lid, yes or no. We can have a drop down menu. This will give us on the back end just only a list of predefined options that we have ourselves predefined can be selected for this particular attribute. So if it was, again, to use the clothing example, we might have a drop down menu that says small, medium, large, extra large, something like that. And we have a few other things as well. The difference between text field and text area, text area is basically just a larger version of text field. Right here, where we typed in size for the attribute label, that's an example of a text field. But if you remember earlier, the larger box where we typed in the description for our product, that's an example of a text area. So to type in the size of a product, we don't need lots of space, so just a text field will be fine. We can mark whether this is going to be required. We're going to say no. Now we're going to open up the Advanced Attribute Properties group. We're going to use the attribute code blank. This is for internal use, almost just kind of like machine use for the website. You can customize this and change this to something, some specific code if you want, but we're not going to worry about that ourselves. For scope, we can have this apply to our store or the whole website or everything. We're just going to stick with store. In most cases, that's going to be the option that you want to go with. Of course, if you're running a site that has multiple stores and they're all clothing sites, for instance, you might want to go with website and that'll allow you to use this anywhere. But for us, it doesn't really matter because we only have one store on our site anyways. I'm just going to stick with store view. We can set a default value if we wanted to. So if we think that maybe 90% of our products are going to be a size of eight ounces, we could type that, but I'm not going to have a default. We're just going to leave this blank. Unique value. In most cases, you will say no to unique value. Unique value means that whatever value we provide for this attribute, in, the, in our case size for this product, that value, maybe eight ounces, can only be provided for this one product. And once this product has that value, no other product on the website can have that. This is useful for, in other cases, to use an example outside of e-commerce for email addresses, for user accounts. If someone is setting up a user account, of course, they're going to provide their email address. You don't want two different accounts to have the same email address. That's going to cause many, many problems. So that would be an example of a case where you want a unique value, again, outside of e-commerce. But obviously, there's a very high chance we're going to have more than one mug that's going to be, again, eight ounces in size, perhaps. So we don't want this to have to be a unique value. That's only for very specific attributes. Here we have input validation for store owner. This is to make sure, if you want to, that the type of information that we've provided for this attribute matches up with what we expect. In other words, you'll see we have a few options here. We can have no validation. We can make sure that this has to be an integer or a decimal number or an email. And if it's not, we'll get an error saying, hey, you didn't provide the correct type of information for this field as you were creating this product on the back end, you need to fix that before you finish creating this product. So 
if we were providing an email for an attribute for some product for whatever reason, and we typed in the number one, for instance, which obviously is not an email address, that would not work, that would not validate, and it wouldn't let us finish until we typed in an email address. In our case, it's gonna kind of be a combination of numbers and letters. We could stick to this, but I'm not gonna worry about validation for simply typing in the size of the product, so we're gonna go with none. Now we have add to column options down here. This may be a little bit confusing. Basically what this means is whether the size attribute is visible in the admins panel table on the back end. So when we see a list of our products, such as on our catalog page, this determines whether the size will show up as one of the things we see in that table. We'll keep this as yes. And then we have use in filter options. This also applies to the back end. This is whether we can filter the list of products that we're viewing in that table by the size of the product. We'll keep that as yes as well. Down here in the manage titles group, there's only one field, default store view. This is the label that's shown to the customer on the front end of the website. So when we wrote size up here for attribute label, that's what we see when we're filling in this field. And this is what the customer is gonna see when they see that piece of information on the front end. Most of the time, it's gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna go with size. And then finally down here, we have storefront properties. Using search will determine whether someone can search for the value of this field essentially. If we expect the customer to be performing a search on our website for the size of a product, we would say yes. And then we have another few options that we can choose from down here. I don't think in our case, most customers are gonna be typing in 12 ounces or 10 ounces in the search bar. If anything, they're gonna be typing in mug. So I'm not gonna worry about using the size for searches. Comparable on storefront will include this attribute when a visitor is doing a product comparison on the website. When they're comparing the two products, do we want the product size? If they're comparing two mugs, do we want the mug size to be included in that comparison? Probably so, because if they're trying to decide between two mugs, then one factor that's probably going to play into that decision is how much coffee the mug can hold. So we'll say yes. Now we have a couple grayed out options here regarding layered navigation, as you'll see. Layered navigation is where you can have options for customers to filter what's being shown on a given list of products. Going back to our clothing example, you may have seen this on clothing websites where you'll have a page full of lots of different types of clothing. And then maybe over in the sidebar, you'll have a list of things you can filter it down by. You can maybe filter it by size, by color, by style, things like that. This determines whether we can do that for this attribute. You can only use layered navigation, however, for dropdown, multiple select, and price input types. Since ours is simply a text field, we can't use layered navigation. So that's irrelevant for this specific example. Use for promo rule conditions. This is if we plan on running any type of promotion that may involve the value of this attribute. We're probably not gonna be running any promotions that say, uh, this mug has to be of a certain size for this promotion. So I'm just gonna keep this as no. Allow HTML tags on storefront. That's asking us whether we want to be allowed to type in HTML tags when we're filling in the value for this field. Maybe we want to make something in bold or italics. We probably don't wanna do that for simply typing out the size of a product. So I'm gonna say no here. We'll just keep it in plain text. Then we have visible on catalog pages on storefront. This is simply to include the information for this attribute on the product's additional information tab. This is kind of the main reason you want to use attributes, again, for providing more information to the customer. There are some attributes that you would want to be purely internal for various reasons, but again, in 99% of cases, we're using attributes to provide more information to the customer. That being the case, we want this to be marked yes. If we mark no, it's gonna hide this attribute from the customer and they wouldn't be able to see the size. So we're gonna keep this as yes. Used in product listing will determine whether when we have a big list of products, whether this value shows up in that list. 
When we're listing products on our website and someone's maybe scanning through all the mugs, I think they're mostly going to be looking at the visual image of the mug as well as the price. Size is going to be important when they're determining finally whether they want to get this mug or not, but I don't know if it's necessary to include that on the list itself. So we're going to take that off. So again, this is for the actual page that the product shows up on. This determines whether this attribute is visible when the product is part of a list of multiple products, and I don't think that's necessary. Do note that this depends on the design theme. In some cases, the design theme will override this, and even if you mark yes, it might not display it. Finally, we have used for sorting in product listing. When we list our products in various ways, you've probably seen this as well on other websites, we can have a drop-down box that allows the customer to determine the way, or the order rather, in which things are listed and how they are listed. So maybe it's by alphabetical order, by price, and so on and so forth. We can choose whether we want to list things by size. I don't know if it's necessary to do this in this case. I suppose it's feasible that someone might want to be looking for the largest mugs compared to the smallest mugs, but I'm going to keep this marked as no. And with that all finished, we're going to go back up to the top and we're going to save this attribute. So we've done that and we're back to our Sunrise mug page. With that saved, we're going to scroll down a little bit and now we have a new group here called Attributes. We can click on that and expand that. And that now has all of the attributes that we've created and added. Right now that's just size. And now we can type in the size of this mug. Let's say this is an eight ounce mug. We can type eight ounces or we can type eight OZ. Again, there's no specific validation going on here. So essentially we can type whatever we want. I'm gonna use this format, eight OZ period. And then I'm going to save the product. Once again, since we've made a change, we need to go to our cache management to refresh the relevant caches. We'll see that in this case, it's our full page caching or our page cache rather. We'll select that, make sure we have refresh selected and then click submit. And everything's refreshed. Now, if we click on our account, we have an option to go to the customer view. I'm going to open this in a new tab so I don't lose where I am on the back end. And again, right now, we don't have a great way to find our product besides just doing a search for it. We'll fix that later, but for now, we'll just type Sunrise. And here's our product. Let's click on that to view the details. And of course, we're taken to the screen for the product. We see its price and everything just like we did before. Now, however, in this box where we have our details, notice now we have a More Information tab. This was not here previously. If we click on that, it'll show any attributes that are supposed to be shown on the front end to the customers. We have this information now, size, eight ounces. If we had a color attribute that was exposed to the visitors, that would also be here and any other attributes that we assigned to this product.